Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, hopefully this week's going to be a better week. Um, there was a few hiccups last week, so hopefully we're starting this week uh, just in a better mood, I guess, and hopefully no interruptions this time. So we are going to be working on my sketchbook today, um, as it is Monday. So I'm going to be working on, not a spread this time, I am going to work on just one page. I'm showing you guys little doodles that I did earlier. So um, I believe sometime last week, maybe Thursday, I asked you guys um, what kind of mediums you want me to work with for the next few, kind of like sketchbook doodles video um, that I could do just because I've been falling back on similar spreads and similar mediums just because I've been really comfortable using them but I wanted to know what you guys wanted to see and a few of you guys said alcohol markers I know some people said gouache and watercolors so I'll definitely tackle those again in the future so I am going to be drawing my OC Koji and OC does stand for original character so Koji is going to be holding a little plush of Hansuke, not a little one, kind of like a larger plush. I've done this several times, but I, buff I thought it'd be fun to do it with alcohol markers. I am going to be doing the line work or some kind of line work with the Art X um, pencil crayons, just because I realized that a lot of my pens tend to bleed with alcohol markers, and if I don't let them dry, an ample amount of time they usually bleed anyways even if they're supposed to be used with alcohol markers or more like you know alcohol um resistant so i decided to use pencil crayons or colored pencils and it was easier for me to keep the whole drawing a lot more clean because the pencil crayon doesn't really bleed with the alcohol markers as long as you don't leave a lot of like kind of debris and little pieces of the lead kind of like floating around you should be okay so if you're not familiar koji is my youngest oc he's about 12 years old and he's kind of more like sports a little bit more spunky kind of kid a bit more how to explain it he's more hot-headed i guess similar to sato in that sense but he's very much um still very sweet, very kind, just needs to learn a lot of things and him and Masaki have a very much like brotherly relationship as um, Masaki kind of like, you know, teaches him and kind of mentors him through life, I guess, is what my story in my brain kind of goes. So basically Koji's grandparents own the flower shop that Masaki works at is kind of how they meet basically and Hansuke who is the little green cat character that he is holding so oh, I forgot to show this I'll put him on the screen I don't know if I'll take a picture of him because right now it's like 2 a.m. again please do not worry about my sleep schedule I'm trying to fix it um, but I have made a plush of him as well in the future uh, when I find a reliable manufacturer I'll definitely see if I can make actual plushes that are a little bit up to my standard if that makes sense i think after my first round of making a plush i realized a lot of flaws and stuff and things i could have streamlined including finding a manufacturer that kind of like best suited our interests if that makes sense i feel like i'll talk about it in another video i guess i don't want to just be kind of ripping on this manufacturer that i worked with like for i think two three years ago so yeah but um, yeah, I showed you guys a few doodles of, or not even a few doodles, um, a doodle of Masaki and a doodle of Akemi on the other page. And you can see him kind of like ghosting on the left side because the paper that I'm using is super thin in this notebook sketchbook. So the ghosting is very apparent. So I am probably going to put sticky notes or some kind of other drawing on the back side. But I've also took the opportunity to kind of just doodle with ballpoint pen on top of that kind of ghosting or bleed through so I could plan out what I wanted to draw today. I was gonna draw Sato, but I've been drawing her, I think a little bit too much or I'm planning to draw her more. So I wanted to give some love to my other OCs such as Koji and I usually for some reason draw him with Hansuke. So in my brain, I think like Hansuke and their world or their timeline is kind of like the like a popular character, kind of like Sanrio character or something like that in their little universe. So that's what Hansuke is there for them. Um, 
but I've always animated Hansuke in a more like he's kind of a real being kind of way if that makes sense he's not like a push or like a fictional character he kind of like actually moves and stuff is I don't know his is like separate from Masaki Koji's universe if that makes sense I have like Spritz and Hansuke as separate things and these are OCs I developed as part of a goal or a dream of mine of making like some kind of stationary line or something in the future so I'm gonna slowly work towards that I want to be able to find ways to make products and design things slowly that fit my standard and fit my needs so I'm gonna try my best to do that so before we get too off track because I tend to ramble and I really do appreciate that some of you guys actually don't mind that I ramble and find it a little bit more um, comforting to listen to because I just talk in the background most likely when you guys are drawing or doodling so I, I really do appreciate it um markers okay let's talk about markers I've used these markers in the past and the reason why I did the little doodle of Masaki and Akemi on the other side was because I wanted to retest them because I haven't used alcohol markers a lot and the last time I used it I think was on a video as well so because I felt very rusty and not really confident in using alcohol markers I do play around as much as I could on this piece of koji because I don't know I yeah I don't feel very confident using alcohol markers there's a lot of things I kept trying to do and trying to blend but I realized that even for my style in terms of coloring and drawing I always find a hard balance of wanting to keep things seamless and like really blended and really smooth and then a part of me wants to keep things a little bit more sharp more defined and almost like cell shaded so I kind of flip flop a bit I kind of settle with more of a cell shaded I think I struggle with this when I'm using gouache as well which I need to kind of like pull back again I think cell shaded and kind of more blocky and chunks and that kind of shift of value kind of fits me a little bit better than me fussing over like blending and making things look smooth the only exception for that for me is kind of like a gradation over the skin because for the skin, um, I didn't do it too much for Koji's skin tone because I think I was just scared to build it up. He is supposed to be a little bit more tanned. Um, it is a little bit of a darker base tone that I used for Masaki and Akemi, but I was scared to bring up the warmness for his cheeks and where his freckle area is. I really do like when I can darken up where the freckles are, so I wish I did that, but I definitely didn't add it in to make it dark enough because right now it's very hard to see where his freckles lay on his face um but yeah i think skin's the only exception where i would like to keep things as smooth as possible hair because it has more texture and same with clothing has like you know wrinkles folds and depending on the clothing type uh will yield different shadows and different highlights and all that jazz so i think i could have played around with that more and yeah you're gonna see me kind of flip-flop between oops um making things look smooth and then kind of like cell shady ish when i start to work on the hair because right off the bat i tried to blend in his skin tone with his hair like a base color for his hair and i can still see a little bit of the patchiness now like i said i don't have that much experience using alcohol markers i'm kind of just playing as i go I do really like how alcohol markers lay in this particular like paper type. This is the application. I think it's like more obvious when I do the sleeves of his sweater because you'll see very smooth and almost like seamless um, chunks, I guess. How do I explain this? Flats, I guess is a, probably a better term. A flat area of color where there's no like streaks not really any patchiness or anything and i really like that look a lot i used to doodle with alcohol markers along with my mechanical pencil and i can get these really nice flat areas which i kind of miss doing but i i like using pastel markers i think i've talked about this a lot um i like using it to accent the pages and stuff it just makes things look a little bit brighter without adding too much but also like I want to add color so I usually lean towards 
using pastel colors uh, when I add them to my doodles. I think I'm trying to move away from that a little bit. Whenever I draw like Alban, so um, the VTuber, a few VTubers that I keep drawing, one of them, I like using kind of like bright oranges or bright reds um, along with the spread if I can, just to make things stand out. And if I write text, I like doing that too. So you can see here, I was trying my best to blend. I even pulled out another mid-tone marker to see if I could transition it even more. I even tried adding purple. I'll add a little bit of like blue, which makes it look a little bit more green. So is this like me really fussing and trying to play around to see what I like? I do like how his eyes turned out. It looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. So in what you guys are seeing, I guess, like on camera, um, it definitely looks a little bit more shiny and glossier. I think if you look in person, you can definitely see where the marker was trying to blend a little bit more, but I was trying to blend a very light color into a very dark color. So it was definitely a bit of a stretch for me, but I think for the most part, it kind of worked out. And I was trying to best match Koji's color to the markers that I had because I was so worried about layering. I do not know which colors layer up nicely. I know sometimes if you layer a light color over top of a darker color, you kind of get this weird like speckled, almost blooming around it, which is what I was kind of facing when I was doing his eyes. But yeah, I think color-wise, I matched majority of his colors quite well. His eyes, I tend to draw more like ultramarine, kind of navy anyways, so it kind of works out. I was kind of glad that I didn't really have to do like a bright blue because one of the blues that I have, which I used for the base of his eyes, was actually the one of the more brighter and lighter blues that I have. Another one that I have that's light enough is kind of too like purpley. It's almost like lavender. So I'm glad I didn't have to go super light. Um, a lot of my OCs don't have, I don't know, not that light of eye color, except for probably Akemi, who has more like golden yellow eye color. Um, but yeah, I was also glad that I could use this weird, I think it's called fluorescent yellow from the set for Hunsuke because I always find it hard to match his body color. Um, and I decided to make his ear color a lot more of this olivey green color because not gonna lie when i first made hansuke his color scheme was very much like what you see on camera so it's kind of like this more warmer green with this kind of like creamy ish color and that's like his main color but when i went to manufacture pushes they're trying so hard to match the colors but they ended up with almost a more neon yellowy green um and at that point, I could tell the manufacturers actually getting very frustrated with me because I kept asking if they could keep changing the color and they're like, but we need to send you the sample for you to confirm material. And he was trying to uh, get me to... Basically, he was trying to sell me on the material more than the color accuracy, which is bad because I feel like I settled when I shouldn't have. But then slowly, I shifted the colors to match um, the plush color, which is not what I want. So in the future, um, I will definitely do my best to up the quality as well as do a bit better um, with quality control. I think, yeah, I think I was too naive going into making plushes in the very beginning. So yeah, and it didn't help that I made plushes right before quarantine hit. So it's kind of bad timing for my part as well as probably the manufacturers. But yeah, I'll do more research and stuff and figure out a way to better do this because I would love to make more plushes with a different fabric, but as well as making some of my Spritz characters because I think it'd be fun to have like small ones. Um, but yeah, just like I'm just basically verbally, I don't know how to explain this, saying whatever, if that makes sense, like verbal vomiting everything in my brain right now. Um, yeah, I'm just basically coming off of a very hectic week. You guys are going to be seeing this on Monday. I actually filmed this the night before, which is Sunday night. Um, technically, it's Monday. It's like 2 a.m. 
Um, but yeah, Sunday was finally my last day of hopefully hecticness. I was able to catch up with a family friend. So me and my brother were hanging out with a family friend, which is very cozy. Because even though I felt kind of awkward talking to him because it's been a while and we were never like super close. Um, now that he's like older, I feel like there's a lot more things we could relate as well as I just miss seeing his parents. His parents are very sweet and very funny. So yeah, it was nice to see them again. Um, yeah, but um, to make sure that you guys aren't concerned about my previous week, everything is good. I was basically just helping out a family member with a few things. So I was on their schedule for the last few days and they had a lot of last minute things come up. Um, some not by their choice, some by their choice. So there was a lot of things outside of my control and I had to keep canceling the stream and a bunch of other things. So yeah, apologies about that. Now, hopefully I'm not going to promise anything at this point anymore because I feel like every time I say I'm going to stream on Monday and I'm going to stream on Thursday, both of them got canceled last time. So um, if I stream on Monday today, um, see you there. If I don't, then, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, this is what I'm talking about. So, kind of this orangey red color, I was able to make it really not that patchy, especially on his left sleeve, I guess. The right sleeve, I kind of left it a little bit lighter because it's just the way how I did the application. Uh, but yeah, I was being very conservative, I think, with being adventurous with the color combinations I could have done. I tried to push the shadows a little bit more on the Hansuke plush because I thought he looked a little too flat and I thought purple could help push the volume of him so he looks a little bit more uh, plump, I guess. I don't know if that's a great word to do. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain's so all over the place. There's a lot more things I wanted to tell you guys, but I don't think I can fit it into today's video. I'm just doing a quick uh, rectangular background in the back of Koji, or behind Koji, and then I'll add some pink stars. And I thought I was gonna only add pink stars, but it looked a little bit too monochromatic for me, so I decided to add blue as well into the back. Um, yeah, maybe in the future I'll do more alcohol marker videos, maybe? We'll see. I If I pick up more markers, I'll definitely do some more because I know they have another set or something or skin tone set and it would be nice to get some skin tone sets or something for um, alcohol markers so I'm not stuck with very limited colors, if that makes sense. But hopefully you guys have been doing well and had a better week. Um, happy Monday and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.